October 26, 1967, 31-year-old John McCain is flying the Navy's A-4 Skyhawk, top speed 670 miles an hour. McCain was on a bombing run over Hanoi. He had a target that he had been assigned. The anti-aircraft fire was very heavy that day. The mission, to knock out a power plant in the capital city. But the North Vietnamese have targets too. Uh, surface to air missile hit my airplane and hit the right wing and took it off and I went into a very violent spiral downward. McCain ejects, breaking both arms and a knee in the process. He descends into the waiting arms of the enemy. I came down in a lake in, uh, near the center of the city of Hanoi. As I came to the surface, the uh, Vietnamese group of them came out and pulled me in. He was met by an angry mob of civilian Vietnamese who resented the fact that he was trying to drop bombs on their city as anyone would. And they beat him up and they punched him and they kicked him and they were treating him extremely badly. And then they threw me in the back of a truck and took me to the prison that we know of as the Hanoi Hilton. You walk in the, these iron doors, it says Maison Centrale, Central House, and then there's a courtyard and then there are corridors with cells. They called a doctor in and uh, the doctor took my pulse and shook his head and the interrogator in English said, it's too late. Then I thought perhaps I was gonna die. But once again, the legendary family name is about to shape John McCain's future. In a funny way, your father saved you. He did. My father saved my life because some hours after that, the door of the cell burst open and the interrogator came in and said, your father is a big admiral and we're gonna take you to the hospital. So he really did. They had found out from our wire services. It is, however, a double-edged sword. The North Vietnamese now have a bargaining chip. At that point, they invited a French film crew in to film him to sort of use as propaganda to show that they had captured this famous American and that they were treating him nicely. How old are you? 31. It's tough watching that. Yeah, I don't like it. I don't enjoy watching it. <clears throat> You're in obvious great pain there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a very unpleasant memory. Are you married? Yes, you are. I have children three. In the background, the interrogator is saying, tell them you want the war to stop. And that's why you hear me say, that's all I have to say. And then the interrogator then said, tell him you, that it's an evil war and you want the war to stop. And the Frenchman turned and said, I think he said enough. Eight months after his capture, the Viet Cong make a self-serving offer to send McCain home. It is one the Navy captain cannot accept. What bothered me most about it was that I knew that if I had accepted the release, then they would go to other prisoners and say, see, your country doesn't care about you. They only care about the Admiral's sons. And I knew that that's what they would do. And I knew I couldn't do that to my fellow prisoners. The decision comes with severe consequences they moved him into solitary confinement, where he stayed for two years. If you've known John McCain at all, you know that the one thing he loves is to be around people. This was possibly the worst punishment they could have ever done to him. The beatings are constant. McCain's only escape, the sounds of tapping, coded messages from other prisoners. They developed a code by which they could talk to each other. It was a tap code, and they tapped on the pipes in their cell and they did the alphabet. A was one, B was two, C was three. I'll never forget the, the tapping to each other and the leadership and inspiration that I got from those people who were far better and stronger than I am. But the brutality of the North Vietnamese is unrelenting. They would hang him from his arms, yank his uh, arms out of their sockets. Uh, they would beat him uh, with sticks. Um, they would engage in mental torture as well. He doesn't wave like this, he waves like this. And that's because he can't lift his arms over his shoulders due to the torture that he suffered at the hands of the Vietnamese. Four days of intense beatings result in McCain reading a scripted confession. He is tormented by his perceived failure to uphold the military's honor code. 
I saw people, and I know people, that underwent far more severe brutality than I experienced, and they didn't crack, and they were my role models. I did not live up to the standards that I'd hoped that I could live up to. I don't know that he ever forgave himself. The other prisoners did, and everyone else pretty much did, but I'm not sure he ever forgave himself. And while a son suffers in prison, a father suffers in silence. He never asked for any special favors for his son, ever. But every year at Christmas, he would go to the demilitarized zone, which was the strip of land between South and North Vietnam, and he would just stare into that country that was holding his son. He never talked about it. He never said what he was thinking, but he did it every year for five years. When he is released from solitary, John McCain's other heroes are waiting for him. The other prisoners in the camp nursed him back to health. They helped him, they cleaned his wounds, they spoon fed him because he couldn't lift his arms, and they nursed him back to relative health. They said, get up, go back into the fight. You're not defeated, go back into the fight. And so many years later, another powerful message delivered by a fellow POW in that familiar tapping code. And he's gonna do it. GBU, which means God bless you, which, which is the, obviously the tap code that we used and uh, we'd always sign off with that when, when we would finish our messages to each other. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.